whether it was watching him in the spring because you weren't participating or being out there with him now, what has been so impressive about Parnell today? Um, I think it's just the, the consistency. Um, you know, he, he never, he doesn't have too many miss assignments. He does everything right, catches the ball, get open. He just, he just does what you need him to time and time again. Um, he's really consistent with it. Um, and he's handled coming in, uh, you know, to a new offense, to a, you know, higher level of play with grace. Um, and he, he did it at a more efficient level than even I thought I did. Um, and I think, you know, Marv and I, we did a pretty good job of, you know, taking, taking uh, accountability of learning the playbook and all that type of stuff. But Carnell has just done it at such a high level. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, he's really smart. Yeah, Garrett used to talk about you and Marvin and how maybe you guys raised his competitive edge a little bit, his preparation and some things when you guys were freshmen. Is Carnell doing that to you two now? Yeah, all the freshmen. Uh, Carnell's the first in the room to let you know if you, if you had a drop that day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he talks a lot of trash. Um, and it gets us kind of going. So we, we got that competitive environment going in the wide receiver room. Um, and kind of like you said, how Garrett was just elevating our our um, competitive nature um, and just pushing each other to be great. Where are you better this year? Hmm? Where are you better this year than last year? Um, where I'm, I'm healthier. <laughs> I feel better than I did last year. Uh, There's a couple games where, you know, you just had to power through. But, you know, this is football, so you're never going to be 100%. But my body's feeling good again. Um, and I'm just excited to play. I'm ready to play. Do you feel like you're overlooked? Uh, I, don't, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> how much lower than 100% were you in, let's say, middle of November? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I have a number. I just know that with the, uh, the, um, the trainers that we have, they're all getting me right. Uh, they've been on top of it 100%. Um, they helped me so much uh, this, this past year, this past offseason, just getting my body right um, and getting back to a place of confidence again. Um, so I'm super grateful towards all of them. Um, I can't even speak on all the people who's helped me get to this point, but um, I'm just really excited for the season. Is it frustrating? I'm trying to think of which would be more frustrating. Be so hurt that you couldn't play or having you can play through it, but you had a diminished life, yeah. which is what you had to do with Roger. Right. I know you prefer to be out there, but that's got to still be just as frustrating as maybe not even playing at all. Yeah, I mean, you got to find little ways and little advantages. It kind of helps train your mind to, okay, maybe I can't run the route this way because my legs hurt, so let me uh, find a more creative way to get open. So it's training all these little aspects about the game. Um, that's what makes football so special. Maybe that's confidence in both Marvin and Garrett that you can play well both. Are they different in many ways or no? I mean, yeah, they're different quarterbacks, and uh, you know, the, the, the more confidence that I have in, in them, they're going to come with experience. Um, you know, nobody thought CJ Stroud was CJ Stroud in sophomore year, um, and I feel like it's going to be a similar case now. Um, whatever people may be saying, we know who we got here in this building. Um, you're always going to have a great quarterback at Ohio State. That's a there's no ifs ands or buts about that. So um, we're excited to just play, get more experience with them. Whoever you know is named to start at the end of the day, but 100 percent confidence in both of those guys. Julian, um, he's just grown, grown a lot more into a leadership role. Um, I feel like he's a guy who's uh, more vocal than he used to be um, in the wide receiver room, and he's really stepped up. He's getting healthy again too, um, which is really great to see. Um, and I'm so excited for his season to come. If Coach Day decides to go with two quarterbacks to open the season, is that going to have a, a big effect on not only you, but you think maybe the other guys in the room? Um, I mean, uh, football is going to be football regardless. We still have our same assignments. It's the same plays. Um, and we're expected to operate at a high level and execute at a high level. That's just what the standard is at Ohio State. And that's just what the standard is in zone six in the receiver room. So um, we feel confident with anybody behind um, behind the center. But we have maximum confidence in both Kyle and Devin. You don't think that would throw off, like, chemistry between you guys? Like, I mean, maybe one quarter there's Kyle, the next quarter there's Devin, or maybe even they alternate drives kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It would be a pretty seamless transition between the two regardless. Um, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not going to say, but, you know, we're going to have to handle it with the grace. We're going to have to find a way. We're going to have to be the difference. So um, if that is if that is the case, if that ends up how it, uh, how it shakes out, then we're just going to find a way to win. Michael, you were talking about it. Being banged up at the end of last year. So, what does a healthy Mecca for a full season look like? What, what's different if you were healthy? What um, could be different this year? Well, I'm I'm just you know staying on top of my body to make sure um, that I can be as healthy as possible. But like I was saying, it is football, so you're always going to have you know little nicks and bruises. Um, but 
I'm not I'm not entirely sure, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to see this year, hopefully, if I can uh, keep my body with, with the grace of the Lord by my side. But um, I'm just going to play to my full potential and uh, to my full ability. What all you did throughout most of the season? I mean, is there, a, is there a receiver room that you can relate to what you guys – might be able to do what your ceiling is if you stay healthy this year. Um, I can't. I can't say who we compare ourselves to, but at the end of the day, we're just going to grind. Um, we're going to we're going to work as hard as we can. We're going to study our plays. Uh, we're going to treat every opponent with respect and come out with our hair on fire. Um, and at the end of the year, we're going to look up and we're going to see where we're at. What are you dealing with this year? At the end of that season? Uh, just a just a couple of, like nagging things. Um, I had I had some surgeries I went through this off season. Um, but the body feel, is feeling good now. So, um, but yeah, they're just nagging things, you know, things that, you know, were kind of just frustrating to play with. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I didn't really have a choice. What impressed you so far about Bryson? Bryson or Brandon? Oh man, uh, I'll go off a, a little bit on the tangent on both those guys. Bryson is just, um, you know, he's one of the smaller dudes in the room, which is okay. Um, he's a freshman. He's young. He's gonna get that that uh, strength to play up, and he's gonna build some more muscle mass, but. I mean, he's super quick. He's super shifty. Um, and, you know, we have this Michael Thomas board in the wide receiver room that tracks all our targets, catches, drops, all that type of stuff. Um, I think Bryson, at the end of fall camp, he had a 90% completion rate when targeted, which is – that's the highest I've seen since I've been here. Um, if that was if that was a national stat, I'm sure he'd be number one in every category. So um, things just – good things happen when he's targeted. Uh, good things happen when the ball goes his way. Uh, for Brandon – uh, he came in, you know, the last out of those four receivers, and he's picking up the offense extremely fast. Um, he's a he's a joy to be around, but he's such a great competitor. Um, him and Carnell go back and forth a lot, which is really funny to be a part of and be around. Um, but Brandon's just a huge playmaker. Um, he goes up and attacks the ball. Uh, he's strong. He's confident, um, and he goes out there and he just balls. He just tries. He tries as hard as he tries his best, and there's never there's never a half-hearted rep with him. You know what it feels like to play with Julian. Do you feel a difference when the next group comes in after Marv and Julian go off the field, or does it just that kind of feel the same? Because to, to us, to the outside people, it doesn't really look like there's a drop off. It's also weird to say that because Marv and Julian go off the field. I mean, that's the goal, right? The goal is there to be no drop off. Um, I don't feel like there's much of a drop off when Chris and Garrett left or when Jackson left. So that's kind of what we do in Zone Six. That's kind of what we do. We take the take the keys, the keys, and we pass them on to the next guy. So um, I expect them to transcend everything that we've done here. Um, and if they didn't, then that's kind of on me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's my job to pass the torch and to give them every bit and every nugget that I have um, taken from here. So I'm glad to see them doing so well. I hope they continue to do so. Um, and I'm just very blessed to be a part of this room. When did you pick last question? It sounds like. That's a good question. I'm not really entirely sure. Maybe it's when I became an older guy. Um, I'm only a third year, but I'm, I'm one of the more senior wide receivers in the room. Um, and I just got that, that sense of wanting to pass the torch from Jackson and from Chris and Garrett. They all wanted to do that. And they're so happy to see us succeeding. Um, and it's so fun to watch them in the NFL now, but uh, there's a point in time where, like I said, the, the, the torch has passed. It's your time now. So, um, yeah, I can't really say when I picked it up, but um, I'm glad to be part of this tradition that we have going. Mick, when we were at practice last, as we were leaving and you guys were closing out, you kind of were a little heated with what I got out there. Mm -hmm. um, what happened and what did you say? Like the, P, the PG version. <laughs> oh, it was just a... Uh, you know, the offense wasn't clicking on all cylinders, but it was early. Um, that's going to happen. Uh, kind of just, you know, making sure we're not lax days of when we take every every rep um, with, uh, you know, take every rep seriously and make sure we're not leaving anything up to chance. Um, so just, you know, nothing, nothing too serious. You know, just getting on the team, making sure we're all ready and we're all we're all uh, firing on all cylinders. Hey, where were you? Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you back. Cool.